So this is a zoning board hearing for the Blue School in East Whateley. Um, I'm Deborah Carney. I'm going to be the acting chair, and our voting members are Kristen Vivon and Bob Smith. And at this point, Mary, if you would like to read uh, this. Just a moment, please. Take your time. I'll have it up in a minute, I think. Here is the uh, legal notice as it was mailed out and ran in the remaining third quarter on March 23rd and 30th. Legal notice, Zoning Board of Appeals, Town of Waitley. Notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals of Waitley will hold a public hearing on Thursday, April 6th, 2023 at 6.40 p.m. On February 22nd, Robert O'Bear applied for a special permit to renovate the Whateley Schoolhouse, which is another name for, for tonight's subject building, I guess, into nine upscale residential housing units on premises located at 219 Christian Lane and owned by Whateley Schoolhouse LLC. The hearing will take place virtually via Zoom the rules of decorum for a public hearing remain in effect, and the chairperson will seek comments from the public when appropriate to do so. Application for the special permit is to be considered under the provisions of the Waitley Zoning Bylaws, as provided by Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A. This notice is also published electronically on www.recorder.com slash public dash notices and www.masspublicnotices.org. There follows the meeting ID and passcode, the computer link to join the meeting and the phone numbers to use if you're joining by phone. Signed, Deborah Carney, Acting Chair, Zoning Board of Appeals. Mr. Robert, did you notice any errors or omissions in that notice? I did not. Okay. So why don't you tell me what document you would like me to start sharing? I'm going to share my screen now and um, bring up our website. And if you would like to walk us through your proposal, um, we could start by asking you where you um, believe you fit in the zoning bylaw and which one of our provisions. <laughs> You're gonna put me in the hot seat. Oh no, I can I can tell you where I think you fit. But I <laughs> yeah, I believe it's I believe it's under the adaptive reuse. Um, you know, I don't have. Uh, if you could pull it up, that would be great. I try, I'm, I know we wrote it in on the application. I believe it's under the the new zoning uh, bylaw that was voted in. Um, because I I originally when I purchased the building from the town. We sort of spearheaded the uh, the activity to do the overlay district for uh, the reuse of historical and town owned municipal buildings. Um, I believe it's 17. I bet if we go into my application. Don't don't worry. I I I I just wanted to make sure you had the chance to say that. You're quite right. It is yeah. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask the chair to steer me in the right direction. Okay. <laughs> it is it's definitely into um, converted historic municipal religious and commercial buildings. For those of you with Correct. the bylaw, it's on um, page 38. And so what would you like me to show your plans, your application? Well, if um, I don't know how familiar the board is with the application and the documents, if everyone's had a chance to review them, but I can give you, I'll give you sort of the general breakdown of, of the project so everyone has an right. understanding of what we're trying to do and uh, the background a little bit. 
So uh, we purchased the building for actually from the school district. Uh, it was about four years ago now at this point. Um, and when then we purchased the adjacent lot, which has the septic system on it from the town through a competitive RFP process. At the time, there wasn't actually an allowable use to convert the building into anything under the current bylaws. Uh, so we worked with the planning board. Um, it was back in, I think, 2019 or 2020. Uh, and the planning board developed a uh, an overlay district and a chain a proposed change for the the town zoning bylaws so that way the town could sell off uh, old real estate or historic properties that would rather be potentially found a reuse for as to just tearing down or remaining on the on the town's liabilities for uh, buildings to maintain. So uh, it's sort of a, a great program. Um, the, the town adapted this new bylaw, it went to town meeting, voted on, accepted, and it became part of the uh, zoning bylaws sense. So while that was all going on, we were, we were sort of moving our project down the field, so to speak, with uh, the national uh, historic, uh, the Historic Preservation Society with the state, Mass Historic, and uh, NPS, the National Park Service, to get the building listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that process was kind of a lengthy process. We had to uh, make an appeal to the, to the National Park Service. Um, we were able to get that listed because of the historical significance of the architecture uh, with the structure being so unique and just the history in Waitley, um, we were able to get that approved, which then basically allowed us to become eligible for historical tax credits through the state and the federal, the federal government, also through the National Park Service, the uh, Historical Preservation uh, Act. So uh, long story short, this has all kind of come together. It's been several years in the, in the making and uh, we finally got the school approved uh, for tax credits. We've got financing now for the project. And this was sort of the last step was to actually just come in and apply for the special permit to move the project forward. So our original plan was to do 10 apartments. Uh, we got some pushback from uh, Mass Historic wanting to sort of preserve the interior uh, sort of hallways, you know, so to speak, the big open ceiling, the, the original feel of, of the individual classrooms. So we, we reduced the number of units down to nine. Um, we're still able to make the project work and uh, we're very excited to move it forward. So we have proposed nine uh, one bedroom apartments, adequate parking, handicapped parking, new lighting, uh, landscaping, uh, no real changes to the exterior of the building. Nothing will really change the way it looks. It'll stay the same. Um, it'll be restored and returned to uh, good condition. And uh, we'll have nine very nice schoolhouse apartments available. So uh, that's sort of the overall plan. Um, I believe we have you know, garnered the support of the town and we have a support letter from the uh, historical society in town. Yeah. And uh, we've met with the planning board already. We've submitted our site plan for site plan review, which as you know, is a sort of a separate process with the planning board. Um, but I'm here tonight on the special permit. Okay, um, thank you. And um, uh, members of our board, do you have the bylaw in front of you? Yes. Okay. So what we can do is just walk through that bylaw. So again, I'm on 171-21.2. And the first number A, the building must may be publicly or privately owned. So you're the owner? Yes, I am. Uh, oh. The building is owned through a holding company, the, Wait, uh, the Whaley Schoolhouse LLC. It's a single member uh, holding company. I'm the only member and uh, it's for liability and historical tax preservation. It's for part of the process that allows us to assign the credits to another party to offset our uh, costs on the project. Okay. 
And as you mentioned, we are in receipt of the um, letter from the Waitley Historical Commission. And later when we open it up to um, comments, I know Donna is here from the Historical Commission in case people have any questions about that. Um, it is certainly allowed in the table of use regulation, what you want to do. So your site plan review is required. You're aware of that. Um, you, you did mention that uh, you had emailed us the site plan review, but we don't have that document. Yeah, I had said, I think I'd emailed it to the town clerk earlier today, okay. but uh, we do, we do have uh, an active, uh, we are on the agenda, I believe, for the meeting of the 19th with the planning board to have a public hearing and take a vote on that as well. I believe it's just a public hearing and then there's a review period. But um, I would ask that any special permit or vote taken tonight would just be uh, subject to the site plan approval by the planning board. So that way we wouldn't have to come back to the board for anything. Oh, no, we, we yes, and we would do that if if that is the way we go. Um, Excuse me, for, for the minutes, is there a date that I can refer to as being the the most up-to-date version of the plan? If the site plan, Mary, or? Well, whatever we're going to be discussing and what we need to go by. Well, we don't really need to discuss the site plan at all. Okay, right. then that's we fine. Yeah, we, we, the site plan is purview of the planning board. Um, I'm just going through our bylaw to you know, make, make it clear that the site plan review is required. Um, so the dimensional requirements can be waived if there's no feasible alternative, um, although increases in lot density ratio and the aquifer overlay districts are dis discouraged. You're not in the aquifer overlay district. Um, so that is not, an issue unless Bob or Kristen, do you have any question on that one? No. Okay. Um, the septic systems must be adequate for the proposed use. Mm -hmm. And I assume you are working with. Yeah, well, well, that's actually on the site plan as well. We have the engineer signed off on the septic system and he's presenting it to the board of health. So the board of health will actually oversee right. that yeah. as well. Right. So um, we're working with, I think it's the uh, great, the Hills, what is it? It's Matt, I, the I can't town think of the name. The, yeah. There you what go, the Hill, the Hill Town District. The yes. district, okay. Yes, okay. so. I'm uh, sorry, I just need to admit somebody from the waiting room who's just shown up. Okay, um, yes. Yeah, we're, I'm just going through these so you're aware of it. Yep. So there are our minutes as well. We know that some of these are not there our go, Come here. jurisdiction. Pardon? Did somebody say something? Deborah, I have a, just a, a comment. Please. Well, it's it's um, without seeing the site plan um, and without seeing the engineers sign off on the septic, it's kind of hard to decide anything. I agree. I, okay. <laughs> and I was okay. getting to the fact that we are very uh, unlikely to vote on this tonight. We do want to right. set up a site, a site uh, a site view ourselves. Um, so just so you're aware of that. Okay. Um, so by virtue of the fact that you have been um, designated by the um, historical commission, you can have more than three dwelling units in this converted building. Um, and I know your proposal is for nine. Does anyone in the audience want to see the plan? Yes. Okay. Of course. <laughs> Let me bring that up then. Huh? I think I have my stuff shut off. Okay. Would they hear us? No. Yes, we can hear you. You might, you Stop. might, um, unless you're a voting member at this moment, you might want to mute. mute. And we, you will absolutely have time to speak. Um, so, Mr. Obear, why don't you describe these are, this is the plan we have. So, why don't you, you know, give us your description here? Uh, sure. We have, uh, this is the lower level. So we have, uh, this broken up into four separate units on the lower level, maintaining the original hallway. Okay. Is there anything else you want to say about the lower level or should I move to the second? Floor? No, you can, you can move to the second floor. Okay. 
And we have five units here. So Living these are all room. one bedroom? Yes, these are all one bedroom. Okay. Excuse me again, Deborah, but what what are what is the name of this plan that we're looking at? This is, let me just go back. And the date would be good. This is on our website, Mary, um, the Waitley Schoolhouse plan. So whenever they were put up, they appear to have all been put up between March 23rd and March 24th. So I'm on our I'm on the town website. Okay, be between when and when? March 23 and March 24. All these documents were put up for us. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, going back to the plan. So this is our second floor. Um, okay. So no additions to the existing structure shall be allowed except the required egress and access. You're maintaining that? Yeah, so we're made this is we're maintaining the original footprint of the entire building. Okay. So there's no there's no changes to the exterior at all. Okay. I'm sorry, I skipped number F, and that is the parking. Parking and loading shall meet the requirements of 17113 to the extent feasible. Now you've got quite a bit of parking there, don't you? That's we awful. we do. I believe it's 22 spaces we need to have, and we have that again all located on the site plan. Okay. So it kind of it kind of falls under site plan review because there's specific requirements that have to be met that right. when they review the site plan, they will make sure that those are meeting the requirements. Right. And but I just want to say that I do agree with Bob that we on the zoning board want to want to see that parking because that parking. Absolutely. Will, yes. OK. And that parking will not be on street, will it? It's all on the no, property. It's all on the property. OK. Okay. Yeah, there's no there's no new curb cuts. We're going to maintain the existing curb cut. Um, you know, all of sort of the standard procedures, you know, dumpsters will have a fencing around them in the back. But, but again, those are those are obviously everyone's curious on the site plan, but it's my understanding is two sort of specifically different processes. So if if they're tied together somehow, as they often should be. It should be one process, in my opinion. But um, you know, I don't want to. You know, I want to make sure everyone's informed. That's all. Yes. Yes. Well, by the time, I mean, as I say, we will schedule a um, a site a view of the property, yeah. and by the time we meet again, we should be able to see what you gave to the planning board, and that's Great. that's helpful for us. Um, and as you know. Um, all necessary state and local licenses and approvals will be necessary. I mean, in effect, the zoning board approves as to use, but that is just one step in your process, as you know. Correct. Okay. So does, at this point, do, do, is there anything else you want me to show from the documents that are on the town website? I mean, I don't think so, unless there's something that everyone wants to take a look at. Let me back up. And first of all, let me just ask um, our voting, our, our board members, is there anything you'd like to see? Have me share the screen for any of this? I, I've seen everything. Okay. Uh, how about if you you share this uh, the screen on the basic construction timetable, which is at the, it's it's in the application. Okay. Okay, so this is it. Yeah, so I was just gonna ask, um, I was the chairman of the uh, school building committee back in the late 80s and early 90s, and we had a feasibility study done on the East School building. And one of the things that um, Arthur Stein Associates from Greenfield, the architect pointed out was that the west wall was bowing. The, the side facing Jane Gripko's house was bowing out. Um, I don't, I don't see anywhere where that is indicated uh, some sort of, I don't know, maybe it's 
stopped Boeing, but I can't imagine that it has. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of that, but I do have a structural engineer on staff. So, you know, if, if, if we encounter a, in a situation during construction that needs to be addressed in unknown condition, then we typically deal with those as they as they present themselves. But thank you for bringing that to my attention. The west wall, the west wall, yeah. Are there any other questions from uh, the board before I open this up to questions for the from the public? Well, I have I'm a question. Yeah. Is um is this going to be on a on a private septic? Yes. Okay, and okay, and and a well and a well. It's on town water. Town water, okay, but but private the septic. Yeah, the building's going to be fully sprinklered. I see that. You keep in mind these are preliminary preliminary conceptual drawings. These aren't for construction drawings. So we, you know, part of the process is that. I also have to submit drawings to the building department for full, you know, evaluation, stamped plans from an architect that we, you know, are working on, but that, you know, for permitting, these are conceptual design plans. So you can't build off those. Those aren't going to have all the same details that will be on the plans for full construction set. It's not the same thing. But your basic conception is that these are nine one bedroom apartments. Correct, correct. The layouts are almost exact, but there are some, you know, discrepancies that always occur during construction. So, but okay. these are uh, these are the basic layouts of the apartments. Okay. Is, is there um, is there no need um, in terms of handicapped accessibility? Um, no, there's there is not. Not until you get over, I believe, 12 or 14 units. We do have handicapped parking, though. Oh, OK, OK. Um, anything else from the board? Other questions? Does the public have any questions or anything they would like me to share from the documents? Yes, Ms. Kearney. Yes. I have three questions. This is Mike Vecta. Yes. The first one is procedural. As an abutter, I did not personally get a notification. My sister-in-law who passed in 2017 did. So I wanna know, is there a certain list that abutters must be uh, taken from? Because I also know of a house that changed hands this past summer that would be considered an abutter and I'm wondering if that person was notified as well. If That's you, question one. Okay. Oh. Uh, um, let's let Mary answer question one. Okay, I'm going to have to go. I think on the application is the, uh, the abutters list. I, I, I'm trying to, I don't know if I can access the- I, I think I have it, Mary. Okay. I think- um, I think we well, have. I'm what I would like to do is shrink my screen, I guess, so that when. Okay. This is the list. That's the list from the assessor's department. And that's what I use to make the label list. Yeah, that list is incorrect for myself because. My tax bill, and I've been on record from 2018 as owner of 176 River Road, and the Ms. Roseland has since deceased, so the records are not up to date, but they should be in the assessor's office because I am getting a tax bill. Well, I'm sorry, excuse me, Mary, did, doesn't this come from the assessor's yeah. office? Yes, well... The, the person who applies goes to the uh, assessor's page in the website and oh. it gets the information for, you can see up in the right, the mailing address for this right. is 34A, that, that's the subject property with a lot of the 
219 Christian Lane. And this is what you find. You look for a list of abutters, and this is what came up apparently for this property. It will, it, it's part of the submission of the uh, application. Okay, Mr. Vecta, I do apologize that you weren't notified. Um, the applicant seems like has made a good faith effort here, but it might be something that you want to bring up with the assessors to make sure that your name is on the appropriate property. Uh, Gretchen did go on and pulled up the page and we are both listed as the owners of 176 as we should be. So it is in the assessor's records. Okay, so Mr. Robert, you did not quite get all the abutters. And I believe that Michael and Kathleen Clark no longer reside at 180 River Road. They do not. I I currently live at um, 180 River Road, and my name is Angelica Perfido. Okay. Deborah, is there a page two for this list? I found this on the web. No, page one. Yeah, it's just a page, page one page is in this one. application. Yeah. Well, that's what came up. Yeah, that's what the town provides when we search for it on their website. Okay, but I'm well. I'm glad that you two are here tonight and are aware of this project. Um, you had a second and a third question? Yes, I did. The second question involves page A11, the first floor of the uh, apartment plan. Okay, let me go and get the plan. And here is the first floor. Okay, if you look at the right side where those three apartments are, is it my imagination or are there doors entering from the, the uh, where is it on the one I have from the kitchen living room? Oh, you're on A9, I need A11, please. <laughs> on the right side, if you look at the top right apartment where the living room kitchen area says there, if you look off to the left, there's a door that is uh, drawn in the plan that goes into the living kitchen of the next apartment. And then from that one in the bedroom, there's a door that goes into the kitchen area of the third apartment, which is down on the bottom. I'm a little confused with that. If there's supposed to be nine apartments, I see three that are connected by doors. Those are those are not actually connected, sir. Those are for those are historical features that have to remain and they get infilled on on the back side. They're just shown there for effect. Okay, well, yeah, but as a lay person looking at it, to me, that's a door. And for public right. meeting, is there anywhere in this document that says that those will be sealed so there's non non accessibility these, these are, between these them? These are these these are not construction drawings, sir. As I explained earlier, these are conceptual drawings. Okay. So these are, these are not for permit. These are not for building permits. So they have to go through a much more lengthy process and design process to finalize details. So these are for, these are for basically for site plan review to, to give conceptual feeling of what the apartment layouts are gonna be. Okay, thank you, Mr. Obear. And the last question I have goes to you. Are these apartments going to be rented or are they going to be purchased? These apartments are gonna be rented so we also have our own management company. We currently manage about 80 units of apartments throughout Greenfield and Montague. Uh, we will provide full-time maintenance, full-time staffing. Uh, we have full-time staffing to deal with issues that come up 24 hours a day. We have a uh, plumber on staff. We have an electrician on staff. We have about 15 full-time guys. So we operate a full construction company as well as a property maintenance division where we generally will renovate a building and then operate the building. So we're an owner operator. We won't just sell this place off to somebody. Uh, we take pride in the work that we do and we deliver a very high end pro uh, product and we like to maintain our properties and keep them in fine condition. Okay, thank you, Mr. O'Bear. I appreciate that clarification. 
Yeah, you're welcome. Does anybody else have a question? It's, I, I have a question, Deborah. It, it seems these, these drawings are, are upside down. I think that the parking is, well, the, is the parking lot on the bottom or the top of these drawings? Because my recollection of the building, the, the right side that you have here should be, is, the, is part of the building facing west, not east. I assume north is going straight up and down here. I don't know. Where's the parking lot on these two drawings? Uh, if you're looking at the drawing that we're looking at now, the left side is River Road. This is River Road? Yes, that's River Road. So, so the parking I, I guess, lot is, the parking lot would be at the top of the building, but in reality, the parking lot that we show on our site plan is behind the building where the basketball court was. So that's going to become our main parking area. The dumpsters will be behind the building in a fenced area. Um, we're going to, you know, have very, very slight light. You know, we have a lighting plan. Um, on the site plan, we have, you know, all of the we have handicapped parking available at the top of the building where this main side entrance is. Um, we've tried to really accommodate everything that we could think of. We're adding a, a buffer, a vegetative buffer across the front of the building, uh, some more on the side by the parking area uh, to try to block headlights and such. Um, you know, we, we, we look to be good neighbors and to uh, improve the quality of the neighborhood, not take away from it. Okay, yeah, that's that's fine, but it would have helped if you had a, a north arrow, a direction arrow on here to know which way these buildings were on the lot. Okay. I don't, I don't know if the second one is A9 showed a direction arrow. I think it has, it may have. No, okay. Or street locations, I guess. Okay. Okay. So, are are there other questions? Mr. I have one. I have one additional one. Sure. And I don't know if Mr. O'Bear can answer this or not, but is the plan to keep the color scheme the same of the exterior of the building, or is it going to change? That's a good question. I, I, I'd have to I'd have to take a town wide poll to be honest. I don't really know. Oh. Uh, is that the original color, or well, does anyone know? I was wondering if the historical commission had any uh, any words about the exterior because I know in other towns the historical commission uh, is very specific on what colors can be used or can't be used. So I was just wondering if they put anything in their letter to you about the exterior colors. I don't think so. Not that I'm aware of. Um, I can go and look for that in the interim. Are you still with us, Donna? Yeah, yeah, I can answer that, um, Mike. Um, we did not, the letter that we sent a few weeks ago, simply, uh, as um, Deborah's already explained, said that um, we have approved the adaptive reuse um, for this building. Um, this building does not have a formal preservation restriction on it, which would have with it a page or 50 pages, <laughs> depending on the building, of specific requirements. Um, but we worked um, with, uh, not directly with Mr. O'Bear, although we met when we toured the building, I think it was in 2018, actually. And we worked with um, the consultant who was helping um, to prepare for the application for the eligibility for the state and federal tax credits that Mr. O'Bear mentioned. And um, we certainly have the impression, and I have the impression from uh, the impact statement submitted that the plan is to retain, and I think you've already said this, um, to retain the look of the exterior to the greatest extent possible. Now I'm going to confess and say I don't. I, I had have assumed that the blue colors are original because so many people who've lived in the town for a very long time have referred right. to it as the blue school. <laughs> right. um, 
but it's certainly something we together could look into if that makes sense. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> well, personally from family members that originated from this town and whatnot, it always had been known as like the blue school. Right, right. So. And it is so unusual, you know, it's almost Moorish, you know, in its color. <laughs> this, is, this is more of an inqu inquiry question than, than yeah. wondering, you know, if it's changed to a different color, will it bother me? If it fits the neighborhood, no. <laughs> but I just, because the blue school and that has been such an iconic historical, like, monument in town for so long and, right. and things. So that's just, just my uh, background for why I'm asking the question. Yeah, we don't have any plans to change the way the building looks other than to make it look, you know, refreshed, you know? So uh, I don't have any plans to change the color of the school. Never, the thought never crossed my mind, honestly, until you brought it up. So <laughs> um, it's always gonna be the blue school for me. Well, sorry I brought it up, but it was just one of those <laughs> things because it's been the blue school since mom was there and everybody yeah. else in the family. So it's kind of, it's got yeah. its own niche in town. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I hate, I hate to rain on everyone's parade, but I went to that school and it wasn't blue. <laughs> it wasn't always blue. It was not always blue. It was not always blue. What Betty, color was it, Bob? Betty, it was, it was like a tannish gray. Yes. Betty Orlowski still there. Yeah, mom, speak up. Wasn't it wasn't it sort of tannish gray? It wasn't blue always. This is this is Barbara Orlowski speaking. Yeah. I don't know what color it was previously, but it was not always blue. Thanks, Barbara. Oh dear. That's just a oh. test of test of my memory. I don't I don't remember it being blue, and we never called it the blue school. We always called it the East School. Right. Well, and the, the problem will be that the original photographs will not be in color. Yeah. <laughs> you know? so it's... I guess it was gray. <laughs> I sure hope that they change the color. That's my personal opinion. <laughs> do, we have any, do we have any other questions? I, I have one more for Bob. Maybe it's too early in design, and I don't know if there's a requirement for this. There's a tall windows all around the building. On every 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 side windows go from floor to ceiling. Uh, will them be retained in, in the same size or shape, or is yeah. that going to be altered? Yeah. yeah, no, all the windows are being retained. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's very little changes to the actual classrooms, other than infilling with a with a bedroom and a in a bathroom. But the idea is to retain as much of the interior look of the rooms as possible. Okay. Now I I do see that I think Donna, did you send the site plan? I forwarded them to you because uh, I had a copy of them. They were distributed yesterday, and they oh, obviously okay. just haven't made their way to. They were sent to something, maybe okay. your generic ZBA account. Yeah, I'm not. I see that they're in my personal email now. I can go out and get them if people want to look at them, or we can look at them when we reconvene. Um, after we've done our site site view, it's up to, would people like to see those now? Well, Ms. Carney, my personal uh, preference would be to have time to look through them all and okay. study them before, to look quickly and try to figure out if you have a question or not is very difficult when looking I, at plans. That is utterly fair. And I, I agree with Mike on that too. Okay. Okay. That's not a problem. I'm, so Mary, um, if they have gone to the town, well, you and I can talk about that. I can get them to you and then they can get in. Into, thank you, Donna, very much for sending those. Um, so what, with what we have now, are there any questions, any additional questions? You want to ask them about the water? It's going to disrupt it. Is there something I hear? I hear somebody. Okay, I, I'm I'm wondering about the water, the water pressure, and if the system will be able to handle that many more. The water. Yes, no, I, I hear that. That's not really something the zoning board um, can answer. That that will come from, um, frankly, the the water commissioners, and um, 
again, the zoning board is approving or not approving this project based on the zoning bylaw in terms of the use of this building. Um, but there's no way that this building would be able to be converted and the apartments built if it didn't, if the, if the water issue wasn't um, part of the licensing. But it's just not a question we can answer. Okay. And, However, somebody will answer it in the process. And, and right now, the, the septic, the septic will be addressed because that's going to have a lot more usage. By the Board of Health, it absolutely will. Okay. Yeah, the, the septic has a 5,000 gallon tank. It's designed for an institutional use. So it's only required to have like a thousand or 2,000 gallon tank. So it's it's way more than adequate. Adequate. We've had I've had a civil engineer, you know, fully evaluate the whole system. Okay, are there any other questions before I stop sharing the screen? I just have one final thing, Ms. Carney. I'd like to sure. thank the board and Mr. O'Bear for listening to my questions and concerns and thank you all for your answers. Oh, thank, thank you. We're always very happy when, when people come out and express their opinions on the projects. So I'm gonna stop the share and we will probably move to continue the hearing so that the board can uh, take a site view. Um, now, Bob, who is a voting member, cannot meet on the 1st May. I'm just getting my calendar and we need him. So we need to first get a date for the site view and then a date to reconvene. Um, so we have a holiday weekend this weekend. Uh, yeah. What Bob and Kristen and Fred are you know and Fred of course can um, can come even though you're not a voting member but Bob and Kristen I suppose we're the ones who should figure out the date for the site view what what looks good fifteenth fifteenth is good Kristen does that work for you yep um, a time ten a.m. ten did you say Bob yeah yep. Is that okay for you, Kristen? Yes, it is. This is okay. April April 15th. April 15th, April 15th at 10 a.m. down at the school. Can you be there, Mr. Robert? Uh, I can at 10 a.m. Yes, please. That's, that's. Okay. Deborah, is it possible? Is it, is it possible to do it sooner than the 15th? Well, are people, Today's only the sixth, right? Yes. Are people around on the eighth? I am. I am. Okay, I am too. So 10 a.m. on the eighth. That sounds fantastic. Okay. Um, so that'll be the site view. Members of the public are there, but we don't take. Um, we're just there to look. Um, if you want to come, you can come, but we're not going to be entertaining anything other than our eyes to look at this. Um, Deborah, is it is it possible to get the um, site plan before then, just so? I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is forward this to members of the board. Mary okay. and I will talk about how to get it up on the website. I, I would mm -hmm. imagine they'd be able to do well. The town offices. I don't close tomorrow. Putting it I up need, on the website. I need to ask them to post it. Okay, so I will forward everybody on our board what Donna sent to me. And the town offices are closed on a Friday, so they won't be up again until Monday. Um, so you folks will not be able to see it on the website until Monday. Um, so now let's think about when we are going to reconvene. So we are going to have, we're going to have a hearing on May 4th, right, Mary? Oh, first, that I believe is the first Thursday. Right. And that's going to be the, the another, the Toro Verde thing that Yes. Yes. Okay. So we need another date that Bob can make um, and that Kristen can make. And um, so what are we thinking? Do we want to try? I don't know. How soon do you want to reconvene? Do you think we could try the week of the 17th? 
of April. Yeah. The the Thursday. Do you, is that a possibility? It's a possibility for me. Yes. Okay. So Mary, in terms of posting that, I can that we are continuing it. We're okay to do that on the twentieth, right? Um. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're posting. Well, I guess we're, what is, we're I haven't got a calendar here. What is Monday? Oh, well, I, okay. So we're talking about, we're, we're going to um, continue our hearing this on this matter until the 20th of April. Right. And I believe we can do that without having to post anything because it's not a new right if, as long as everybody's here and we're doing this as part of the public hearing everybody right. everybody's got the information that, that okay today so let's let's just reconvene on the 20th at 6 40. and that's a thursday yes it is yes. great thank you denver oh no thank you everybody for being so flexible so we will meet at the site view at 10 a.m on the 8th and reconvene on the 20th. By then, the new documents should be available to everybody for a number of days, two weeks at least, so that people can have their questions. Deborah, uh, does, does the site plan for the 8th have to be advertised on their website? I don't believe so. I, I think in the past when we've scheduled a view, we've just put it into our records. But it, it, usually goes, it, goes, it usually goes on the calendar. On okay. The but it's usually not the same week when we have site review. It's well, I, I don't know, but you won't well, get it. You won't get it on our calendar until next Monday. Right. Um, right, listen. Mary. It won't be on until it's going to be if there is a requirement of forty-eight hours. So it won't be till Tuesday. Huh. Um, yeah, I, I can send the request now, but they won't see it till Monday. Right. And by that time, the view will be over. Right. You could leave the view open for oh, a couple April, days. April 8th, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, you know, we have never done that where Mostly they've all been on Saturdays, but they were been on Saturday. I um is is there a is there a, a time crunch where we have to do this soon? Well the applicant well, that... asked us if we could do it a little sooner. But yeah, in we reality, to... well, a thought just came to if we're not meeting again until the 20th, we really could go back to the 15th. Yeah. Unless you have a conflict being there with us, Mr. Aubert. Uh, I don't have a conflict. I'm just trying to, I have time constraints with the, there's a new energy code that goes into play in July and I have to have a building permit or it totally changes the feasibility of the project. Okay. Um, I, I think we're within your frame. Yeah, I um, think so. So, so let's, so I'm sorry for any confusion so that we can properly advertise or properly alert the public to the site yep. view. We're going to go back now to the, to the 15th, 15th at 10 a.m. Thank you. Okay. So that's the yeah. On the 15th, it's a site view. And then we will reconvene on the 20th at 6.40. In the interim, the new site plan review for the planning board should be up on the ZBA's website by Monday. It might even it might even be on the planning board's website now, but we should have it on the ZBA website too. So do we have any other questions or anything else on this matter? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> So thank, thank you very much. Thank you all very much. This is, the board will stay because we have minutes to, appro to approve from previous hearings, but folks who were invested in this hearing do not need to stay any longer, unless you want to. You're all welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So I guess we didn't get Roger.
Yeah, Mr. Bechtel will have his too. Yeah, we'll Let's see what's going on with Margie here now. Okay, so we can hear we can hear um, non ZBAs. You're welcome to stay, but we can hear you. So I'd like to ask you to mute. Oh, sorry. That's okay. So Mary, we have those two meeting, those two um, minutes to approve. Yes. Okay. Did everybody get the reminder set of minutes with the corrections on it? Yes. Or one from Deborah and one from Roger. Okay. Yeah. What were the I, corrections I, basically? There, well, from the last meeting, the November 17th minutes had three typos that Deborah corrected in bold and sent out to everybody. Right. I sent, I resent it as a reminder this afternoon. And Roger sent one amendment that he would like me to make. I forwarded his email with that right. this afternoon also. And those four items, three typos and a two word exchange, that's what was, I'm looking for the, I'm just looking for the set of uh, minutes right here in the pile of things so that I can follow along. <clears throat> I'll be right with you. I think that's okay. He sent a message. Roger, you're not there, are you? No, I guess not. Okay, Deborah's connection corrections, which were in bold, I can point out in a moment. Okay, I see one on page four. This was not a typo. I looked at them earlier and I thought they were fine. And as long as Rogers got in, I'm okay with well, do you Do you see on page four, the, the bold part? I don't actually have that don't have, okay. screen. So I can go out and try to get it. I just have to go into my email. Well, that, that's okay. Um, okay. If, 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 I don't know if everybody else is, you know, has it or needs to go over it now. That was one. Just looking for more bolds, but they're not jumping out at me. I know they were there. You, they were there, Mary. You had got them. Well, I guess we're. If everyone was fine with what? Okay, page five. There's a typo there. I guess I left out the word the. Yeah, they were really minor. I never they put it really in. Minor. See, there should be should be another one, but I think it was toward the end. Bob, you broke the hearts of so many by saying the school was not blue. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard it referred to as everyone. Well, Fred can remember it was always yeah. referred to as the East School. Yet one was the center school and the other right. one was the East School. Right. But it was it was so many people clearly had had sort of internalized this memory that didn't exist. No, I think that blue that blue painting got done probably in the. Uh, I have to ask Skrasky. He would know. Yeah. I yeah, because he was principal idea. then. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, you okay, know, I've, got, I've got one typo on, on page four, one on page five. I can go out. Let me check my email and see. I must have lost track of the third one. There, there were three. I'm just going to go and check. I'll be right back. Oh, 
Oh, it's at the bottom of five, or I'm sorry, the bottom of four, and the owners want to increase the amount and type of stored explosives. It's a bold phrase. Right. And then there's one on the bottom of five. The. Well, okay, that's. And then the third. The, yeah. the, the is third. more in the middle. And then down at the bottom, the, the last second of the last paragraph there, it says, if it does. Those are the three. Those are the three. Those are the three. And then and Roger wanted. Um, he wanted to take out the word. Uh, let's see. Join forces. Please change my two words at the end to one word. Instead of join forces, he wanted consult. Right. So that Roger suggested that she consult with the Moors as opposed to join forces. It's in the same paragraph with the the, the regarding the noise. It's at the which, which um meeting does this refer? I never got these minutes. I don't Maybe it's because I wasn't there. there. You weren't there, Bob. You weren't okay. there. So okay. you need you need not worry on this one. Okay. Okay. So have you found that, Mary? I'm still looking for it. He, I found. Okay. No, I can. I can sh show you. It should be on page five, right where they're talking. It is about that. where you where you see that paragraph saying regarding the noise that bold. Oh, just before just before yeah. the is it. It's between those two. <laughs> Be it's between regarding the noise and the if it, those two bolds. Yeah, that's where I'm looking and I'm blanking. Okay, so Roger. Um, oh, I see it. Yep. yep, right closer to if it. Yep, just Roger above. suggested, uh, Mar he was talking to Marcy Nickerson saying, she suggested that she join forces with the Moors. And instead of join forces, he would rather have it say, suggested that she consult with the Moors. Yes. Yeah, so those are the four things that were uh, suggested as corrections. I, I didn't make any of them yet in case there were any other corrections tonight or any other changes. So it was a long set of minutes. So and to give people longer to check them over, we postponed voting on it until tonight. So in the meantime, Maybe somebody's come up with something else, or maybe not. I'm I'm good with them as they are, and I think Kristen and Fred had already looked at them, and then we yes. had agreed. Yeah, and so if we if those change, I can we can we vote if, if you, with on contingent you making those changes? Can we accept them? Oh yeah, we we do that. You know, whenever there's, it's just. Yeah. I, I write in the minutes that the, they were approved as amended. Okay, so and yes. I make the amendments before I send them into uh, the town offices. So I, I, I vote we approve. I will second that vote. Thank you. I mean, I should have made a motion. Yes, okay. So are we <laughs> voting to approve? Fred, are you okay with those? Yes. yes. Great. All right. And I thought the minutes on our last hearing, they looked good to me. Yes, motion to approve. The hair, the hair salon minutes. Yes. Yes. Did somebody? I, did somebody second? I'll um, second. I'll second that. I mean, on the on the November, somebody did, I guess. But. Yes, Kristen did. I did. Yeah. Okay. And what did we just do on? Was it March second? The March second minutes. Fred made a motion to ex to um, approve, and I seconded it. So all in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay, that takes care of that. I think we might be done. Uh, Deborah, could yes. you, once we're done with the official meeting, I guess, and you're done recording, I'd like to just ask a procedural question that maybe the, all the board and Mary should be on with. So. So is this something you'd like me to keep recording? No. All right, I'm gonna end our recording now.